Hey, my name is Curly from Fontaine's DC, and this is Records in My Love. Okay, records in my life. Okay, yeah. We are ready to roll. Thanks so much for being on Records in My Life. No worries at all. How are you today? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, one of my one of my really good friends lives in Vancouver. Or he lives in Whistler actually. So, I was hanging out with him today. He's a he's a dear old friend of mine. So I'm good. Fantastic. I I wanted to congratulate you. The tour is doing really really well. And yeah. thank you. How does it feel again to be doing live shows and on the road? Yeah, it's great. You know, it's uh, it was a weird time off, but one that I think uh, benefited us in a way, just to take a bit of a step back from it. I think whenever you tour for too long, you just kind of lose sight of the actual goal of things. But um, we're we're in a really good place now. It's nice we have like two albums that we pretty much never played in America to to show to people. Like so, it's uh, yeah, it's going really well. I'm enjoying it. And your latest record, Skin Deep Yet. Congratulations on that as well. I'm a, I, I don't you. see it as well. I'm a massive, my son and I are massive fans of the record. And uh, nice. I'll ask you a bit about that. Tell us a bit about the creation of that. Because it was made obviously during a tumultuous time. For yeah, uh, it was made. We, we kind of, we all, when, uh, when things kind of kicked off, you know, whenever the lockdown happened, we all went kind of separate ways for a while. And um, it, we all kind of just started writing demos just to kind of feel like we were still musicians, you know, kind of whenever you can't tour, uh, creating music is kind of the only thing you have left of like being a musician or being that thing that you think you are. So we just had a load of songs, you know, no one really asked us to make this record, but we just did it anyway. <laughs> You know, but uh, I th I'm really proud of how it turned out. I think we, I think we, um, we expanded what people expect of us to enough of a degree now that we can pretty much do anything we want. Really, look. You guys, I think from what I've read and researched, you guys have described it as a bit of a departure, which is a little bit of a departure. But uh, and you were a little leery about presenting it to the label. Was that the case or? No, like honestly, Partisan, our label are amazing and um, they are very supportive of anything that we kind of want to do. And um, I think like the way that we've kind of structured things, it, even from going from Doggerel to A Hero's Death, I think they expect us to always kind of change. And that, that has become kind of a part of our essence as a band is that we kind of always morph and evolve. Top question. They're all your babies. Do you have a favorite song off the album? Um, I do, yeah. Um, to be honest, it, it was Roman Holiday for a long time, but we just started playing Big Shot live. See, that's the thing on this tour is that we've been, we've been figuring out how to play them live as we were going. So you kind of, I feel like the, the transition from, you know, studio to the stage is like a very interesting one and a song can kind of change in your mind and I think Big Shot now is like my favorite uh, song to play. Fantastic. Let's go back to your youth. You're still a young, you're still a young fellow, but what was the first record that your parents or a sibling or a cousin played for you that you were just, it was that magical moment where you're like, this, this is amazing. Um, one of my earliest memories of, um, of listening to music actually uh, is listening to uh, Meatloaf with my dad driving from uh, Galway where he's from back to where I'm from Monaghan and uh, yeah that's one of my first times like I remember listening to like what you call rock and roll music and kind of <laughs> wondering like what is this which is a mad one like because I, I don't listen to Meatloaf really now but I obviously still have like it's a very sentimental thing to me you know that I have with my dad and uh my dad's not like crazy into music, but that was that was the one that we'd always blare going going back home. So that's fantastic. I mean, does your dad your dad must be super proud of you? Does he has he seen you? He must have seen your dad a few times. He must have oh, seen yeah, you play yeah. a few times. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. No, my dad. Yeah, my dad's cool. Fantastic. Fontaine's DC. Am I correct in my research that the name of the band is after a character in The Godfather? Johnny is Fontaine. That right? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have a favorite soundtrack? <laughs> oh, favorite soundtrack? Uh, I do actually. Um, 
the soundtrack to uh, I love the soundtrack to uh, Twin Peaks, the TV show. Do you know that was it? Uh, oh, gonna, I can't remember his name. That's uh, Italian sounding guy. Yeah, but all his uh, all all the soundtracks to that I thought was incredible. Actually, I did a I soundtracked a, a short film uh, last year, uh, just like a, a small project with a guy, and that was like one thing that I was kind of leaning on. Cause I'd never really thought of doing soundtrack stuff before, but um, uh, that was definitely one that I just the the emotion that he pulls off with like the kind of dreamy uh, essence as well is just like really really interesting. Like. Since we're shoot, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We're shooting in the Great White North. I'm, I'm not a massive, um, patri whatever, patriotic guy, but do you have a favorite Canadian album? Um, I definitely do, but I feel like I don't, I, I rarely know if someone is American or Canadian, but uh, Neil Young, anything by Neil Young is, is savage like so. We'll go with him. Oh, like, um, what was it? Um, Buffalo Springfield. Um, all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That goes back. Yeah. Any album by Neil Young in particular that you can? Uh... Harvest Moon. I remember a funny time actually. That that song is like. That album is like uh, we were listening to that when we were driving through Spain one time, one of the first tours that we ever did, and we were all sitting there, kind of you know, <laughs> like uh, singing along and kind of swaying, and then suddenly a crow <laughs> flew low on the motorway and it, we smashed into our wing, like our in, in our mirror. And we all just like started screaming. So that's yeah. <laughs> that was uh, I never I can never listen to that song the same actually. No. <laughs> Any young Irish bands that we should be looking out for? Um, ju just. <laughs> um, I'm really sorry, but I need to get past. All right. <laughs> it's okay. No worries, mate. Where are you going? I'm going to the fucking toilet. This place is over there. It's over there. Any, any young uh, Irish bands? Do you want to drop in a record for us? Definitely not. No. <laughs> any young Irish bands? Uh, I have to say Just Mustard, who we have on tour with us now, because um, they're incredible. They have a new album coming out, and they, they just signed to Partizan as well. And, uh, yeah, their music is incredible. So anyone out there looking for a new Irish band, Just Mustard is the one. I'm going to put you on, on the spot again. You're DJing a party, and it's a dental convention, so it's a tough crowd. What's the album you put on to to get the floor moving? I wouldn't put like an album. Um, this is records in my life, but I, 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 I'd say a song. To be honest, uh, it's a song called uh, "Where's Jason's K." And it's by a uh, DJ called uh, Cyclops. That's what I play. Cool. What's a good record to unwind to? I mean, you guys are been on the road for a while, you're playing masses and masses of shows. What, yeah. What's a good album to unwind to after a show when you're on the, in a hotel room or tour bus? Um, my go-to would be um, Cole's Corner by Richard Hawley. I don't know if you know that record, but uh, Richard Hawley is one of the great um, British crooners and um, an incredible songwriter. And, and that album, um, I think it's his second or I don't know, maybe it's his first solo album, but um, it's amazing, like honestly, just like beautiful ballads, beautiful singing, amazing string arrangements. So yeah, that's my that's my go-to wind down album. My son's starting a in a record collection. Mm -hmm. uh, what's a record you'd buy for him? Uh, Let it bleed by the Rolling Stones. Fantastic. I feel like that's a good one. You know, it's like like Keith Richards is one of my first real guitar loves. Like where. When I started like really listening to how he played and like the the kind of the riffs and like the way he played rhythm guitar, like it just it made that band, you know. He, he played guitar like a piano, you know what I mean? Like, and that's something that I was trying to be for a while. So I think it's a good start. You can kind of go anywhere after like kind of studying that kind of uh, way of playing. You have one record to save. God forbid. I'm, not, I'm sorry if you're not a religious man or whatever, but you have one record to save from your collection. Oh, of mine. Um, I I really love um, I have a a copy of a, an album called Mother Juno by uh, Gun Club. You know, you know. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I just out of all my collection, that's one that I just I really cherish. You know, it has a song on it called uh, Breaking Hands. It's one of my favorite songs ever. We were talking, sorry, we were talking about Mark Lanigan earlier, and that mm. was his, I think that was his favorite band. Gun Club? Just, yeah, no pretty way. much, yeah, yeah really? pretty much. Mad, yeah. Yeah. 
they're amazing. Like uh, they have another song uh, that I love called uh, "Mother of Earth." The guitar playing, the guitar riff in that I think is my favorite guitar riff of all time, to be honest. Thanks again so much for being on Records. My wife, we just got a quick round of fun questions for yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. Weed, water, or wine to write or listen to your favorite record? Yeah, uh, weed, for sure. <laughs> to write and listen to your favorite record? Yeah, I, <laughs> I used to write a lot when I, uh, I used to like, smoke weed and write a lot back in the day. I don't read really as much anymore, but um, definitely for listening to records, like it's. Uh, it's the best way to kind of sink into an album. Wine is good as well, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's a bit more um, <laughs> confrontational, I suppose. <laughs> truly, yeah, truly. Yeah, yeah. Record of your high school years, generation. Um, record from back then. Uh, in Utero was a big one. Fantastic record. Yeah. Words of wisdom for your fans and our audience. Well, for like music? In general. Words of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> there's a guy that tours with us. He's actually not on this tour, but he's a, he's a, he's a good friend. He, he texts with us the other time. His name is Bernie. And he has a rule for touring saying that eating is cheating and sleeping is for cunts. <laughs> That's um, words to live by. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for being on the show. And have a great show tonight. No and best, best of luck with everything. Uh, thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks, Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the director and editor of Records in My Life. Guess you liked it because we're here at the end of the video, so hit like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. And if you're feeling supportive, consider clicking over to patreon.com forward slash RIMLTV, and you can help us out there. Cheers. See you next time.